Hi everyone, I'm Ethany Gale and today let's talk about structuring short stories. Obviously there's not just one right way to do this and short stories can be structured in a myriad of different ways. You also don't have to be thinking about structure as you write, you can just write down the story in a way that you think is going to be best for that story. I usually am thinking about structure but it's not a particular framework that I've gotten from a book or another person, it's just whatever structure I've decided is going to be best for that specific story that I'm writing at the time. But let's start with established structures that most writers are going to be familiar with. For short stories, you can use structures that would typically be used for longer works, like the hero's journey or the three-act structure, although of course you've got a smaller word count, so things are going to be more condensed. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about either the hero's journey or the three-act structure in this video, because there are resources about those things all over the internet, and they make up so much of longer form Western storytelling, like movies or novels. But to be very brief in summarising these things. The hero's journey is when a hero starts in the known, they go into the unknown, they face challenges, they come back to the known, a changed person. And the three-act structure is an introduction, rising action, climax and falling action. But I don't often hear these structures talked about in relation to short fiction, even though they're so embedded in Western storytelling. For shorts, the structures that I hear referenced the most are the mice quotient and also the try-fail cycle. Mice stands for milieu, or the setting and the world of the story, idea, character and event. You can bring these into the story in any order you like, but the usual advice is to resolve them in the opposite order, like nesting dolls. So if you introduce your key character last, after the world, idea and key event of your story, then you resolve that character storyline first, before you resolve the world, idea and key event. It's first in, last out. Last in, first out. Personally, I have never intentionally written a short story in this format and it doesn't mesh very well with the way that I write. It doesn't seem very helpful to me, it seems a bit too rigid. But if it works for you, then that's great, do whatever works. The try-fail cycle works like this. There's a character with a problem. They try and fix the problem and they fail. They might try again to fix it another two times or five times or twenty. Eventually they succeed. The end. My immediate reaction to this was that it sounded pretty dull and that I didn't like it. But then I gave it some more thought and another name for this kind of format could be something like four times and didn't do the thing and the one time she did which is a format that I can find entertaining. And then I thought some more and I love time loop stories. And time loop stories are essentially one long try-fail cycle. So obviously I don't dislike this format, I just want it to be done well. And I think for me a big part of it being done well is keeping a fast pace and not having any one try-fail cycle last for too long. I certainly don't think that a try-fail cycle is necessary for a story. The only structure that I think is usually necessary is this. 1. That there's a question or a problem. 2. That as a result of this question or problem, steps are taken. And 3. That we see the consequences. And you can string a long sequence of these same three steps into a much longer story as well. Here's a very basic example. Billy thinks he catches a glimpse of Santa out the window, but he's not sure. That's the question and the problem. Billy goes outside and climbs up on the balcony railing to try and see Santa better. That's the steps taken, literal steps in this instance. And the consequences are that Billy falls off the balcony trying to spot Santa. If I was writing this story, I would probably have Billy see that it was in fact Santa, but he sees this as he's falling to his death which also answers the question posed at the start of the story, which I don't think is mandatory, but can often make a story feel more satisfying. When I first started to write short fiction, I was a little bit structurally challenged, and what helped me a lot was fairy tale retellings. The great thing about retellings is that you've already got the structure and all of the key story beats there, and then it's up to you to change the world or the characters or the context to keep things fresh and interesting for your readers. I moved away from retellings a few years ago, and now I tend to look at each individual story as having its own structure. 
basically the structure is like a bento box that I can design for each story with the right size and shape compartments for what I want to put in them. This probably sounds a bit strange and nebulous, so let me give you some examples. I really like competition stories. Both Little Freedoms and The Orchard are both competition stories and they both have very similar structures. The bento box sort of structures of these stories look like before the competition, round one, round two, various additional rounds, and then after the competition. I know that those are the troughs of the bento box that I need to fill with story. Little Freedoms has more rounds than The Orchard, but its rounds are also on average shorter. And for The Orchard, more things are happening outside of the competition, but it doesn't matter because I've still got my basic story sections. I've also broken up other story structural bento boxes by the days of the week or by another time period or by people that the main character goes to see, for example. I do tend to like having a pattern to the middle of my stories or as I've referred to it in the past, it's a bit like verses in a song. They follow the same melody, but the lyrics are different. Not all of my stories are structured in these kind of patterns. The story that I finished the most recently, it's only about 700 words long and the structure is really quite straightforward. It's got an introduction, then the characters look like they're going to get together, they don't get together, and then one of them dies. The end. So that's it for our discussion of a short story structure today. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know down in the comments below. If you like the video, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.